The video that you're about to see was part of a live training that I did for the course TLDR Plus. That's a simple plus training course. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about functions and how it relates to getting things in and out of simple plus with events. In this section, I'm going to talk about functions. Now there's a couple different kinds of functions and there's more advanced ways that you can bring data into them and out of them and get them to do things. But I'm just going to talk about the core concept of them right now. I've already explained how this code kind of goes start through a bunch of things and then ends. Functions are kind of a smaller portion of code that has a start and an end point. And when you trigger it, it runs through these steps and then it will return back to wherever it came from. And this is very powerful because you can segregate parts of your program to do different things based on what it needs to do. So if we look at kind of the structure of a function, and I guess I should switch over to, to simple plus. This is in the starting out template. You see this highlighted area here. Um, keyword function, then the function name. Open and close bracket. You can ignore those right now. That's where we'll put data that we're sending into the function. And then we've got stuff in here. And we've got the curly brace open and closed. And I guess I could do that on here. So function, my function. And again, in simple plus, this is not case sensitive. So you can have it however you want, basically. Open curly brace, close curly brace. So anything in here, Anything in here will execute and then return back from where it came. Now there's a spot here at the end where you could return data and you'll see if I go over here, this function here has a return. We're gonna talk about that later because I don't wanna confuse you too much. But at this point, just the core concept of a function. So what a function lets you do is repeat things without having to write it down multiple times. So if you have a function that could, uh, parsing is a good example, where you want to take a, take a string and find parts of the string. Find, say you have a first name and a last name, for example. And we haven't talked much about data manipulation, so right now I'm just talking about the concepts. But say you have, like, my first name and last name, Dustin Berg, as a string, so it's got the double quotes. This is assigned to a variable. And say we want the function to return just the first name and not the second name. Now again, I'm gonna explain how to do this. Right now I just want you to understand the concept where the function could be sent in that information, the string, and it could do some processing, figure out what it is, and just return this part. And that's something that you might do in a loop or do multiple times, but by having it in a function, anytime you wanna make changes to this part, Maybe instead of the first name, you want it to return. Um, say that you want to change your function so that it returns the name in all capital letters or all lowercase letters. If you weren't using a function to do that, you'd have to change a bunch of things inside your pro inside your main program. And I'm I'm talking about the simple plus code. But here, you just change it in the the handler. So the function is basically doing some events and returning some information. And that could be inside, like I said, inside a loop or use in different parts of your simple plus program where you want to reference or call different things to happen. So the main reason that I wanted to go into functions just on a very high level first before talking about more stuff is the main ways of getting in to a simple plus program is from events. And events are basically a type of function that's triggered by something that happens. So if you look on on the starting out template. So there are three primary events that we're dealing with in Simple Plus, and these are push, release, and change. So the push and release would be based on digital presses, and the change is primarily based on analog. I think it would probably work on digitals as well, but I typically don't use that. There's also this event that will trigger basically on any change of anything. I have never used that. I actually had to look it up to see what it meant because I didn't even realize. So 
that's not going to be too, too useful in, in most cases. Push, release, and change are pretty simple to understand. So with simple windows here, this is the example that I showed in, in last week's session, where basically you've got this simple plus module that ends up in simple, and it's got inputs and outputs. So whenever a change happens on one, one of these inputs, inside the simple plus module, and I'll try to put them side by side so you can see them, inside the simple plus module, we're looking for this, this push event basically. Thanks for checking out this video. Now, if you like what you see here, please subscribe to this channel. I'm gonna be posting a bunch more Crestron programming tutorials and stuff like that. And if you're interested in some of these courses, please go to training.proavschool.com and you can check them out. This was part of the TLDR Plus course. And there is also a free Simple Logic Cookbook course. That's a good starting point if you wanna check it out and see the kind of thing that we teach. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.